Hello, welcome to the Friday, January 7th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier is on a roll this week, and well, he found yet another interesting malware sample. This time, a Python script that is pretty much still under development, so it's not quite finished yet, but uh, likely the author uh, actually uploaded it to Virus Total. What's sort of special about it is that this Python script specifically targets system with a simplified Chinese uh, user interface language. So basically, mainly. China is being targeted here. That's, however, is also where you sort of see a little bit the beta uh, version here of the script. There is a API call that's being used here, get system default UI language. If it's not equals to 2052, which would be simplified Chinese, it's exiting, but actually the exit here is commented out. So uh, maybe the developer was actually using a system that's in not in Chinese and is trying to sort of still experiment uh, with the script. The script will then download additional malware from the Alibaba cloud. So again, consistent with targeting Chinese that it is using a Chinese cloud provider to deliver additional parts of the malware. Given that the overall malware hasn't been finished yet, it's not really clear what the purpose is. It's also listening on some odd high ports, but also only on loopback. And yes, we usually hear more about systems that sort of target Western countries and, for example, avoid, for example, Russia by uh, detecting keyboard drivers and the like. Uh, But doesn't mean that other countries aren't sometimes targeted as well. Uh, Just uh, we don't really see a lot of those samples. But well, let's go back to our normal cloud provider for fishers, and that's uh, Google. Uh, Jeremy Fuchs uh, from Avanan uh, has written up a blog post with details how uh, comments in Google Docs are being used to trick people to visit phishing sites. The way this works is pretty straightforward. The attacker just leaves a comment on a Google document mentioning the target user with an ad symbol. This will automatically trigger an email from Google to that user. The user, of course, sees a legitimate email coming from Google, clicks on the link. That link now leads to the Google comment, which in turn has a second link that then tells the user to, well, to find out more about why I'm commenting here, uh, just click on the link, which then gets them to an Outlook 365 login screen. So uh, the idea behind this is that the user sees a link on a document in Google, thinks there is more information to be retrieved, and then is presented with sort of what looks like a legitimate Outlook login, and of course is losing credentials here to the phishing actor. Part of the problem here is that the document that the attacker is commenting on does not actually have to be a comment that the victim is at all involved in. So the attacker just sets up any kind of document and then mentions just the email address as part of the comment and that triggers the email. So kind of makes you use Google as a mass mailer for you. And we got an interesting twist on bypassing two-factor authentication, again, in this case, targeting uh, Google. The trick here is that uh, you as a victim offer some item for sale and a possible buyer is contacting you and telling you, well, I'm interested in the item, but uh, I'm afraid that... uh, I'm being scammed here, so I would like to authenticate that you are the correct person. And to accomplish that, they're going to send you a Google authentication uh, prompt. Now, that's, of course, where the trick happens. They are making you click on the second factor here. I talked about this before, that uh, the user interface part of these uh, two-factor authentication prompts has been a little bit of a problem yesterday easy for the user to use, but they're also easy to click by mistake or just to trick the user into clicking the prompt and approving a login. 
And lots of talk, in particular on InfoSec Twitter, about the crypto coin miner in Norton's anti-virus product. Uh, just a quick note on this. It's actually not news that was originally announced back in June of last year. I guess uh, people are just now discovering it and also noting that it is very difficult to uninstall. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.